Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. I apologize I've been absent the last three weeks. Um, a couple of weeks ago I was performing in Tennessee getting ready for that and these last two weeks I've been catching up on my private teaching. So today I want to address the style of the waltz um, and some different options that you could use. There's lots of different uh, ways that you could enhance the feeling of a waltz rather than just playing it straight and I'm gonna give two examples of Chopin waltzes today and and the differences between the two um, not that he was writing different styles of you know waltzes w between these two I'm not saying that but um, sometimes the stress of where you put the beat or where you put the delay will enhance the beauty and the allure of the dance rather I'm just gonna play it straight this is waltz in C-sharp minor, opus 64, number two. Let's just take it to there. What I'd like to do in this one is to delay beat two. So, oh sorry, delay beat three, which is typical of the Viennese waltz, sorry. You can see two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, and you could shape that all sorts of different ways. Um, by the way, I have appropriate pro practice video on that, a full length tutorial if you want to check that out. I'll put that in the link below. Um, now let's, so that one we were in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, kind of going one, two, and then delaying the third. Let's go to the very first waltz um, in this book, uh, opus 18. Um, now, I have never played this. This video is dedicated to one of my private students named Rebecca, who was working on that C-sharp minor. Or, sorry, she was working on a waltz from Carnival that reminded me um, with the delay of the three uh, of that. And then I was um, also helping my sister with this. Um <laughs> Right here, I think it helps one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So almost delaying the second beat. Because if you go, you know, that would be very awkward. So you have to be loose. Same thing with the mazurkas of Chopin. Um, I had this extremely naive comment from uh, this man I knew. Um, he said, oh, come on, Josh, you know that you're supposed to delay the third beat in all mazurkas. And it, it's not as simple as that. <laughs> it would have sounded terrible in that particular mazurka. You have to adjust according to what piece you're playing. But the waltz should not just be played straight. You know, so I think one, two, three, one, two, three. of rubato in there as well versus even with good dynamics it kind of gets boring so let's try it one more time and then we'll be done So, the point of today's video is to encourage you to always try to enhance the mazurka with some type of delay or hesitation, whether it's delaying beat three, which is very common, or in this instance, it was delaying beat two, so it could go two, three, one. Usually you want to create momentum to that, that downbeat um, by delaying somewhere in the middle of the bar, and then it kind of cycles and has a very characteristic dance feel to it. 
If any of you have any questions, if you'd like to audition for private online lessons through Skype or um, any other video requests, please email me. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Also, if you wouldn't mind liking or sharing this video, it helps me get the word out to more people and um, continue making more videos like this to help you with your um, individual requests. Thank you for joining me today. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.